<coughs> Good afternoon. Welcome to Tuesday Team Training Webinars. Uh, we're going to do something a little different this time. I actually have to go catch an airplane. I'm flying uh, to speak tomorrow, and so I've got to catch a plane. So we're going to do the marketing segment of this first, and then uh, patients will pick up and do the uh, do the balance of it. So this, uh, this marketing section is about increasing the sale. So first, let me kind of review a couple of things that I, I talk about kind of regularly. One is, it is my job to challenge you. It is my job to cause you to think differently. You don't need anybody walking around patting you on the back, telling you, just keep doing the same thing that you're doing over and over. So... If you get uncomfortable or you feel challenged, that means I'm doing a good job. Fits rule number one, this is important to us. Um, in all of the things you do, but specifically as we're talking about prom today, make sure that you've done your homework. You know your stuff, you know your details, that you've taken the time to be prepared. And then when you do, make sure you have fun with it you get the chance to make a lot of girls' dreams come true, and uh, and that should be something that you have fun with and not dread. So here's my definition of marketing. Marketing is doing something that can be measured. And just for term-wise, doing something that can't be measured is what I would call advertising. Versus marketing, we can specifically track and see what type of results did we get for the effort and energy that we put into it? So again, this one is about increasing the sale. The first way to make sure that you're increasing the sale is to make sure that you understand it is all about the girl. There are marketing strategies for the boy, for the mother, for the school, but those you really shouldn't worry about. Uh, if you just focus on doing everything you can to market about the girl, you're going to be in really good shape. Remember what an important day it is to her, getting her hair done, her nails done. The limo's going to show up. Prince Charming's going to get out. She's been dreaming about this day for years. And you get the opportunity to be a very important part of this. One of the things to make sure that you're doing uh, to be able to connect with the girl and increase your sale is to make sure that you've done your homework. Uh, increasing your sale often has will make a difference if you're understanding the prices of the dresses. If you're just making a simple corsage or making a corsage that's a $35 price point and you're just using that as a price point for the sake of having a price point, you're going to be missing an opportunity because you're not designing specifically for the dress. Spend your time in the dress stores. Get a feel for the dresses, the colors, the textures, the materials, the styles, so that you can create a corsage that goes with that. Same thing with the tuxes. What are the styles? What are the colors? What are the looks this year? Uh, make sure that you're paying attention to all of these. The more you know about the things that are relevant in their world, the better you're going to be able to increase the sale. Uh, make sure you're going to the teen jewelry stores and looking around, Claire's and icing. Um, for example, what are the types of things that are uh, in trend and popular for this age group right now? Look at their Facebook pages, spend some time on uh, Pinterest, get an idea again of what are the things that they're pinning? What are the things that they like? The same way you do it for a bride, you're doing it for a young girl, to be able to see what they like and what their interests are and then be able to create their corsage, their prom um, floral accessories that are in line with what their tastes are and what today's trends are. So here's one that we, uh, that we talk about often. Uh, there's the diamond jewel, the diamond industry has done a very good job of creating a basic rule about what should the price of, the engagement ring be. And the rule that they have put together is three months of the man's salary. So regardless of how much he makes, they're saying three months of his salary is what that ring should be. 
Whether or not that's real or relevant, we don't know, but it is a rule that's become very commonplace and people tend to understand it. So we've taken the same thing as far as corsage and we've done the same, uh, created the same type of a rule. What we know is if you look at the dress, you'll have a very good idea of what the girl's budget is, of how much money she has access to, in some cases, how much money she has, but what she's willing or able to spend. The average prom dress today is uh, $440, $460, $475. So the rule we look at using is to get one of the prom magazines. Here is this one's one of them this year, and this is the year, this is the magazine we suggest you get um, to get teen prom and support these folks primarily because they make sure that they include flowers in their magazine and none of the others do. So they're doing something to help promote the flower industry. So let's make sure we're doing things to help support them. So here's one you can see. Uh, where the corsage is included in the dress. <clears throat> so our basic rule is to use these in your store. And when the girl comes in, uh, you want to do two things. The first thing you want to do is ask her to find the color, show you the color of her dress. Uh, this would be very difficult for a young man to describe all the multicolors that are in there. But we've learned over the year, blue isn't blue, green isn't green, uh, purple isn't necessarily purple. So if you get a chance to ask them to show you the color of the dress, a young man is likely to say this dress is green, or we would call it sea foam or maybe a light aqua. So that saves a ton of things. Then the second thing is uh, for the girl to show you her dress or something that is similar to her dress. And the rule we suggest is corsages start at 15% of the price of the dress. So perfect example, if the girl comes in and shows you this dress, she has just told you that she has access to a lot of money. And this is no different than if she pulled up out in front of your store in a Rolls Royce limo. If she did that, you would immediately be drawn to the fact that she must have access to a lot of money. And with that in mind, you know that you can offer a higher priced corsage that includes fancier, nicer upgrades, more elegant flowers, more unique things, and you can get to be super creative. However, if the girl pulls up in the Beverly Hillbillies uh, truck, that may be a signal to you that there's not a lot of money there. So be careful about don't try to raise the price of the corsage and the boutonnieres up so much. But here's an easy tip. Have these in your store, use them when the girl comes in, show them to her, and work off of that rule, corsages start at 15% of the price of the dress. And when it comes to leadership, this is a rule that you can use that if the mother comes in or the boy comes in and they're looking at it and they're not in the right price range, real easy for you to say, here, let me tell you what the basic rule is. You share that rule with them, you get a picture of the dress, you've been out shopping, You've got an idea or an understanding that it's a $400 dress, so you can just say to them, so that your date or your daughter doesn't stand out as being under-adorned, the rule is 15% of the price of the dress. So, yes, you might be saving money. No, you won't be making the impression that you're hoping for. Or, no, your daughter may not be standing out to the same extent that you want her to be. So corsages start at 15% of the price of the dress. If you use this rule, you will find that your sales will go up and go up dramatically. Here's a good, everybody likes this. Here's a good explanation of why it's important to show the color of the dress. On the right, this is how men see colors. Red, purple, pink, orange, yellow, green, and blue. Versus on the left, all the different ways that the girls see color. So having them show you the color of the dress um, can save a lot of a uh, lot of problems. Signature corsages. This is actually what um, patience is going to follow with is signature corsages. And so, as a strategy, what we suggest is you make three or four, five or six 
really, really, really expensive corsages. One of the things we say is you will never sell a hundred dollar corsage until you make a hundred dollar corsage. Have these really expensive pieces made up so that when the doctor's daughter and the lawyer's daughter and the dentist's daughter and the entrepreneur's daughter walk in and they show you that big, fancy, expensive dress that you can say to them, here, I've got something that is just for you. This is ultra creative. This is over the top fancy. It fits in your budget. It really makes you stand out with all of the other ways um, that you're already going to be doing. Then give these names. Uh, when we offered this or showed this a few years ago, we named them after Las Vegas hotels. But you might name it the Beyonce or the Katy Perry or the Kardashian or name it after fancy cars, the Mustang, the Jaguar, uh, but something that gives it a name. <clears throat> so when that girl comes in and she shows her address, take her by the hand and say, come on, honey, let me show you the Ferrari. Uh, now, the worst case scenario is it's too high priced and the girl doesn't buy it. That's your worst case. If she decides she wants to be a price shopper, can you imagine the look on the florist down the street when she walks in and says, can you show me your Ferrari corsage? Unless they've been a part of this, they don't have any idea what these signature corsages are. So have them ready. Have your frames ready. Maybe have some permanents in them. Be able to swap the permanents out for fresh. But have some really expensive, high-margin corsages so that you can maximize your sales. Um, I like to show this. I won't be showing this tomorrow because I'm actually going to be in Iowa. Um, but I asked the question, who knows where Earlville, Iowa is? And unless Julie Poltler um, is on the webinar, pretty much nobody knows where this town is. It's a town of 820. And the florist in this town is the one who shared this idea with us the first time. So a very small town. 820 people. She had things called the girl next door, the overachiever, the diva, the prom queen, the rebel. She made these up that they were very, very fancy with lots of bling, lots of accessories, lots of fancy things to draw those girls who were really looking for something unique. Now, shouldn't be surprised about this. Look down at the bottom and look at the name of this store. Posh Wedding and Special Event Florals. Now, in a town of 820, how many posh wedding and special events can you have? I wouldn't think very many. But one of the things Brandy told me about this when I visited with her about, a, about it a few years ago is that today's high school students drive for miles to come to her store because she has the wild, creative, the super unique um, corsages there. So look at doing signature corsages. Very expensive, expensive on purpose. And here's a story about uh, Darla Pollock, who's on the Teleflora team. Darla is from uh, Saginaw, Michigan. And a few years ago, um, Saginaw, Michigan, all of Michigan was hit very bad by the recession and anything to do with the car industry. So Darla made a signature corsage and she put it out for $69. She knew she wasn't going to sell any. But she wanted to be able to show that what she could do, she could be creative, she could have some fancy things. So Darla was telling me about this, and then she said, Dan, I'm almost embarrassed to tell you this, but I didn't sell a single one. But I did sell three of them, and I even had someone come up to the counter and say, can you make this a little nicer? And she ended up selling her $100 corsage. So don't be afraid of them. Give it a try, and I think you'll find this is a strategy that has the opportunity to increase your sales. Signature boutonnieres. Do fancy designed boutonnieres. If you watched Patience program this morning, she did some beautiful things, all creative, all designed, um, not just the single rose and some, some jip. And the example I like to use is to look at the one in the center of this slide. Look at the, the one in the middle. And often I ask the question, what would you sell this for? The most common answer is $29.95. Now, the interesting thing I would say to you is 
at twenty nine ninety five, your margins are through the ceiling. So if we look at it, we break it down. What does one Salau leaf cost? It costs a fraction of a penny. That little pinch of Queen Anne's lace, what does that cost? Again, only a fraction of a penny. The hypericum, maybe a couple of pennies. The buckle, the wholesale cost on the buckle is $5. So if looking at doing what your wholesale costs and adding in your labor here, your costs are very, very low compared to the impact you get of something that is beautifully designed and often people think that they could sell it for $29.95 real easily. So again, we're talking about how do you increase your sales? Look at creating these designed boutonnieres that are special and fancy and look to be able to raise your sales. Prom fashion shows. This is a great way to be able to increase your sales by getting involved in the prom fashion shows. Connect with the prom dress stores. They're the ones who put them on. Tell them you would like to make the corsages and boutonnieres for the fashion show that's happening at the schools. They will then invite you. Um, you'll set up a booth or a table and be able to show a lot of the different types of creative looks that you can do. This is a great way to be able to increase your sales by making them aware of the more creative, the more artistic, and the fancier types of looks that you can do. Don't go here to write orders. Go here to showcase the type of work you can do, and the beautiful elements you've got to work with. So I like to share this story. We have one florist who went to a prom fashion show uh, but didn't feel like they needed to do anything else. The boys were the only ones who placed the orders. They only ordered on the elastic band. Um, he felt like he dominated the market, didn't need to do anything else. So we asked him to go to the prom fashion show he did. And here were his results. His average sale went from $22 to $29. Not very much. No, that's huge. That's a 30% increase. For that school, they picked up over 100 more orders than they'd had before. But they already thought they dominated the school. But come to find out, there was quite a bit more business there. The nice thing was 85% of the orders came from the girl. And what we know is when the girl places the order the sales go up. So what had happened is the boys were used to coming in. The girls saw these beautiful things, tried to explain to him what they wanted. He didn't understand. He finally just said, just go order it yourself and I'll pay for it. And then out of over 250 corsages, only three of them were on elastic bands. He had a $3,950 increase with a minimal investment. So prom fashion shows have a great way of being able to increase your sales. So here's a few other simple little tips. Have the youngest girl in your store be your designated prom salesperson. These folks get together. They talk the same language. They get the same high energy. Uh, you'll see great sales increases when you connect the two of them together. One thing I tell people is I know this. No girl is going to go running out of the flower shop and jump in the front seat of the minivan with mom and go, I just got the coolest prom flowers from the great-haired old man in the flower shop. That's not going to happen. But instead, if it's one of her friends, one of her peers, and they come in there and they get some high energy and they get going, they get talking together, you'll find that you've got an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, and that young girl in your store is going to help drive the sales and drive them higher. Uh, don't use the phrase that we like to use for a lot of the older generation. Don't say, don't worry, honey, I'll make it look pretty for you. They don't want that. They want to know what it's going to be made of, how it's going to look, what's the basic idea. Patient showed this morning that she often does sketches when she's sitting with the girls. Um, take the time to teach them the process. The more they're familiar with the process, the more likely they are to feel, feel more comfortable spending more money with you. Um, always take the time to show them that you're interested and don't be afraid to start with the higher item and then work your way down to the less expensive items if you begin to get some resistance at the higher items. Give them the freedom to be expressive. Let them create their own pieces. Put out your bling buffet. Let them pick the components, the ribbon, the chains, the bling, the bracelets. Let them pick the pieces that they like, and then you top it off with the flowers that go together with it. 
Um, offer exclusive designs. We talked about that as far as the signature corsages. Make sure you've got lots of ribbon. Um, women love ribbon. And if you don't believe me, just look in your back row. Women and girls love ribbon. Put it out. Let them add as much ribbon into it as they want. Again, you're going to see your sales go up. Um, look at getting some unique foliages. One of the things, uh, again, patients did earlier today was a unique uh, variety of uh, leucodendron. Get some unique foliages that you can show them how easy it is just by adding a creative new foliage into it to give it a whole different look from everybody else. Don't be afraid to raise your prices. I just read, uh, read something the other day where a shop said that they thought they, their flower shops could sell for $25. Um, their business coach said to them immediately, you need to raise your prices to $45. Their business coach told them to do it. They did. Within hours, they were selling $45 corsages. I'm not saying those are what your prices need to be, but I am saying as a way of looking at increasing your sales, don't be afraid to raise your prices. Uh, look at using the three. This, is, this happens often. Florists use the good, better, best technique. So often the good is mini carns, better is roses or spray roses, and the best is the orchids. But if you're going to put out three styles and three price points for them to look at and you have a good, better, best type of strategy, manipulate the price of your middle one higher because that's the one that everybody picks. So instead of going 25, 35, 45, maybe you want to go 25, 45, 55, but make that middle one have a higher price on it because you know that's the one that they're going to pick. So. Look at what you want your average to be. Take it and put it a few higher dollars higher than your average and make that your medium priced one that you know people are going to pick and pick most often. Again, we talked about this. Start at the higher price point. Don't be afraid to have a $100 corsage um, option. Don't forget the boutonniere. Don't leave it to chance. Make sure you take care of that order um, all at the same time. Make them a part of the ordering process. Um, the more they're involved, the better they will be. When it comes to the boutonnieres, um, do not use a lot of feminine, frilly kinds of words. They don't want um, squiggly and pretty. They want strong and masculine. So be careful about the, the language you're using with them. Don't be afraid to offer incentives. Um, often a good incentive can help drive your sales. And we see this with fundraisers. There's two ways to do fundraisers. One is by a percentage. The other is by a set amount. People ask me often, which one do I recommend? I always recommend the percentage because with the percentage, I can use that as a way of driving my sale um, higher. I can say to the girl or to the couple, you know, yes, it's a little higher than you want it to, but you do realize we're giving a donation back to whatever the organization is at the school and that can be a way to help you drive your sales and drive them up also. Um, make sure you know your pricing, your costs. If you know your costs well, you'll make sure that your pricing strategies are right. Create pricing sheets uh, where it's easy for them to look at what the items are and what the costs are. Train your staff. You train them well for Valentine's Day. You train them well for Mother's Day and other holidays. Take the time to train them really well when it comes to um, the things that you're going to be offering for prom. And then one of the strategies we teach is sell three things. No girl wants to look like every other girl going to the prom. So to sell three things, a corsage, a boutonniere, and a third item, whether it's a hair piece, an arm piece, something for the shoe, the purse, look at selling that third piece um, as a way of helping to drive your sales up. A few more things. Sell the bracelet first. They're coming for flowers. They're not leaving until they get the flowers. So look at selling the bracelet first and then adding the flowers to it. And when we see the strategy followed, we always see prices, uh, sales go up. So this could be a great way for them, for you to raise your um, selling prices. Have them try on the bracelet. Once they've tried it on, it's become comfortable. 
they get they take ownership out of it and often they keep it. So have them try on the bracelet. It becomes something that they're going to know that they want. We talk a little bit about leadership from time to time. And what we want to say to you is don't be afraid to lead them instead of them trying to tell you what they want. Don't be afraid to offer ideas and suggestions, take them by the hand and say, here, let me show you the newest styles, the newest looks, the newest textures, materials. Again, back to these creative foliages. Let me show you the kinds of unique things we can do for you that you're going to get because you came to see us. Uh, we started. We talked about the 15% of the price of the dress already. Personalize, customize. Um, look at the two pieces, um, or look at the corsage and the photo here, where they've taken and they've um, done a treatment on the ribbon to give it texture. That texture matches the texture that's in the dress. They didn't put crystals in there, but they used Vogue, so it gives off that look of crystals. So they've got both the texture of the dress and the crystal, the look of the crystals in the corsage that match the dress. So personalize it, customize it, add motion, texture, dangles, make them unique, not the same as everybody else. Don't be afraid to reach out there and make it even more creative by doing more types of things with it. Don't forget you're selling a keepsake. Keepsakes sell for more money than regular items. So don't be afraid to charge more because you're selling a keepsake. When it comes to prom night, there's some things you can do that enhance the experience. One that people like is to understand that the ignore button on the cell phone is either the best invention ever created or the worst. But one of the things you can do that will help you is instead of calling the girl and tell her her corsage is ready, set up an area where you can take a picture of the corsage with the name of your shop in the picture and then text message that to the girl. 30 seconds later, her best girlfriend's going to have it. A minute later, it's going to be on her Facebook page with OMG, look what I'm wearing to the prom tonight. And there's a ton of free advertising because it's got the name of your flower shop on there. So make sure that you're doing that. Tell the kids to take pictures. Put them on their Facebook uh, page. Bring them back into the store and post them. When you can show lots of unique creative styles of different pictures in the store, then as the people are coming in for the next groups of proms, they're likely to see something that's overly creative, more expensive, and that decide that that's the type of thing that they want to be able to do. Don't forget to send thank you notes, get them back in your store, give them a web-based catalog, but make sure you're doing um, thank you notes that get them to say the special thank you to them for you being a part of their special day. This uh, was put in Florist Review last year. These are the same types of things that we share that florists are doing around the country. Make sure there, there's no duplication. They're becoming the school's official florist. They're setting out the bling buffet, making sure to do things that are different. So we understand that when I say these to you, it may be you may think it's because I'm going to get something out of it. But these are florists that have done it and had a lot of success with it. So I think you more likely believe them than you will believe me. Make the experience special. Uh, we talk about this often. When is the last time you received a handwritten thank you note? When is the last time you sent a handwritten thank you note to a 16-year-old girl? This is going to have a big impact for her. Shops are doing things called custom fittings. And when they come in for their custom fitting, they're bringing their bracelet and materials out to them on a silver platter. The one at the bottom Selling the boy a single long stem red rose in a box with fancy ribbon to tie it off with that he then in turn gives it to the mother. So again, if you're looking at a way of raising your sales, how much does a single long stem red rose sell for in a box with fancy ribbon tied around it? So $10, $15. If you can sell that to 25% of your couple's, you've just picked up a nice price increase. 
The other thing you've done is to show them the power of giving flowers to women. Uh, so there's a, a really strong message and you're looking for the reciprocal message to come down the way when the people who've been given those flowers and are giving those flowers are then calling you to place more orders because you're the one that helped them out. One of the things that we hear often is people don't think they can raise the price of their corsage. They don't think they can raise the price of their boutonniere anymore. But if you add that third item, you may be able to increase your total prom sales without raising the price of your corsage and boutonniere, but still picking up a different third item for them to buy. Look at putting together a group of prom all-stars. Put together a nail shop, a hair shop, a tanning salon, a dress store, a tuxedo store. For you to try and do all this by yourself is very, very difficult. But see if you could put together a group of you that will all work together to capture the same customer. When you have an event, they get invited. When they have an event, you get invited. So that you're going back and forth uh, promoting each other and you use the energy from each other to make it a strong, positive prom season and help each other get better. Okay, that is it for me. What kind of questions do you have for me today? Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, Patience is going to jump in here now and pick up the design portion of it. Uh, and again, it's signature corsages. Actually, Jamie's going to put up a quick poll, uh, and then after the poll, uh, patients will jump right in here. Thank you very much. Are we all done, Jamie? Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you, Dan, for all that great advice. Um, I know I've taken quite a few um, items that he's talked about in his marketing and utilized them in our store, and they really do work. I mean, you really have to try them. Maybe you can't do everything he talked about today, but you can pull one or two items that that you really that hit home and try those in your store, and I think you'll be really, really happy with the success. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. My name is Patience Pickner, and I'm a designer for the Fitz Design Team. And today we're going to show you some fun um, corsage ideas, and hopefully that I will teach you a few new things, and you'll have fun while you're doing it. So the first um, project we're going to do is using the Athena bracelet. So we'll go ahead and get um, our products ready. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and type those questions into your um, computer and Jamie and Dan will answer those for you or let me know if it's something that I need to answer. So the first item we need to use is the Athena um, bracelet, armband actually. So if you want to grab this. And then we've got the flying high feathers, which I love. And we have these in black today. You can have whatever color you want, but I chose black. And then we should have 
um, the gleaming leaves, which are really pretty. I think they come like 12 in a package, but we just need six today. So you can pull out six of those if you'd like. Design chain, we need some design chain. And I chose the Wanda design chain. Um, there's a lot of great design chains in the line. So you can pick whichever one you like. This one's a little bit larger, but it's fun to work with. And um, I think it kind of mimicked the Gerber Daisy that we're going to be using. So it was just kind of a repetition. I like I liked that. So that's why I chose this particular design chain. And you should have a couple yards of ribbon. Your choice of colors. I like to use, Dan mentioned that we like ribbon. I do. I admit it. My ribbon racks are ridiculous. But what are you going to do? They're so pretty. So I like to use at least two kinds of ribbon in my corsage work. Um, sometimes I'll use three, but minimum of two usually. And then some silk corsage leaves. So I grabbed silver because that's what I had. And then we're going to use one Gerber daisy. So orange. And a couple of stems of lily grass. So you should have all that in front of you. And we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, the first thing you're going to do, and I'm going to tilt my screen down so you can see my hands here. The first thing you're going to do is um, after you take the armband out of the package, you're going to want to tie the knot really tight. Sometimes they get loosened up a little bit in shipping, and sometimes they're not tied real tight from the factory to begin with. So you always want to make a nice, good knot because you don't want that design clip to go anywhere. So just tie that really tight. Now, don't make the mistake of cutting these off yet. I've done that before, and they're very useful. You want to make sure that you cut them off by the end of the project, but leave them on there until you're absolutely sure that you're done with them. One thing I wanted to mention about the Athena bracelet is that it works. I mean, you can use it in so many cool ways. Um, later on, I'll show you uh, how I made like a garter out of it. You can do, I've used it for a headpiece, um, armband. There's just a lot of really cool ideas and ways to use this piece. So it's one of my favorite. Okay, so we tied that on there. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and make the bow. And I like to leave my tails um, relatively long when I'm making bows, just because um, I don't, if I know exactly what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll cut them a little shorter. But if I'm just kind of winging the design, then I'll leave them long until I'm sure that I don't need them. And you can always snip them off. And I'll show you a good use for those snips of ribbon later, too. So I'm going to leave it kind of long and just go ahead and make the bow here quick. Now, if I'm being totally honest, I would tell you that probably I wouldn't even tie this bow off with a wire. I would just tie it right into the wristlet with using the ribbons that it comes with, the little white ribbons. But it's kind of an awkward thing. I'm using other body parts rather than just my hands. So for today, I'm going to do it the right way and go ahead and grab a piece of wire and tie the bow off. And I did make my bow a little bit bigger than normal because we're using a Gerber daisy and it's a big flower, so it needs a, uh, a lot of backing. So now I'll just go ahead and separate my bow, fluff it out a little bit. Separate those two different kinds of ribbons so you can see both kinds. All right. And find the middle of my bow here and then I'm going to go ahead and snip off the wire. And then using the strings on the corsage band, I'm just going to go ahead and tie the ribbon on. And we want to make sure that we tie it really tight. So I'll probably tie it twice here. A really quick way to green up your corsages is to use ruscus and um, Italian ruscus. And that should be done before the bow. You can just take two um, branches off the ruscus, two or three, and put them back and forth. So one's going this way, one's going that way and tie them on so you don't have to glue just tie them right on and then tie the bow on top of that but for today we're using the silk corsage leaf so we won't worry about that i'm going to fluff that a little bit more 
And we still have our white ribbon that came with the bracelet. So we're gonna use that and we're gonna tie in some of the design chain. Um, again, the length is really up to you. I usually try to keep it a little bit longer than I think I might need because you never know, I might change my mind and want it longer and it's easy to cut some off, but you can't add on very easily. So go ahead and lay that across there. And then we're gonna tie that in as well. And again, if you end up cutting a few links off the design chain, it won't be a waste because there's lots of way to ways to use those up and I'm gonna show you those. Okay, so I think I'm done with these ribbons. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut them off now. You don't wanna cut them all the way down to the knot because then you run the risk of them becoming untied. But just get them pretty close. And they add another little texture in there to glue into so it doesn't hurt if there's a little bit of it left. Okay. Now we're gonna decorate. So we've got all this going on here. We've got the leaves and we've got the ribbon and we kind of want it all to be hanging down because this is an armband. So we want it hanging down the arm, but I think the ends of the ribbons and the chain are kind of boring. So we're gonna go ahead and decorate those now. And the way we're gonna do that is pretty simple. A Couple different ways here. We're gonna add in some feathers from the flying high. And I'm just gonna cut that really short here, really close to right where it's all um, taped together there. And you'll notice with your design chain that there's um, kind of like a little string, like a sturdy string that keeps them together. What I like to do is put glue on both back sides and fold it over. But before, while I'm doing that, I kind of tuck the decoration in between the strings. It's like an added way of making sure that it's gonna stay in there. So I'm gonna grab our glue. And just try to put a little bit on the two bottom links on each chain. We talked a little bit this morning about what's the right way to do things, taping and wiring or gluing. <clears throat> and <clears throat> my thought on that is the right way to do it is whatever works best for you. So um, I like to glue, but I do tape and wire sometimes too. So it's good to know both, both ways. So we're gonna let that dry a little bit. And then we're gonna go ahead and fold this over. And as we're folding it over, we're just gonna stick that little feather through those strings, drop it down into the glue, and then drop the other, lay the other design disc flat on top. So you end up with this. It's in there pretty good, but we're gonna let it sit there and dry a little bit. And we'll do the same thing with the other one. That's my kitty. Go ahead and cut that. Fold over the design disc. Kind of sandwiching the feather in between. Okay. So again, once that dries, it's gonna be in there good, but it needs a little bit to dry. So we're just gonna lay that flat and work on the ribbons. Now, when you get three feathers with the flying high, and these are really, sometimes when you're using um, the smaller design chain, you can cut these feathers apart if you wanna do the same technique and just use one piece of feather on the smaller design chain. So then you can get, you can decorate four or five um, chains with one of the flying high. But I'm gonna save this last flying high to tuck in around the Gerber. So we'll just set that aside. Then we're gonna take the gleaming leaves in silver and we're gonna kind of do the same thing, except we're gonna do it in the ribbon. So I'll probably cut off a little bit of this. It depends on if you want because the chain won't hide all of this stem. So if you don't mind some of the stem showing, which actually is kind of cute, you can leave it long. But if you want it just the leaf showing, then you'll want to cut off a little bit of the, the leaf or the stem, I'm sorry. 
So then you take just two chunks of the design chain. And again, you wanna put a little bit of glue on both of the back sides. And you can do this to all the ends of your tails, tails of your ribbon, or you can do it to one, two, you can do whatever you want here. We'll go ahead and just do it for two right now so we don't run out of time. Move this aside here. So then we're gonna take our ribbon, put this, put it on one of the chains and we're gonna flip this front one over and slide the leaf right through there again. So it looks like this, okay. We're gonna lay that down and let that dry. And we'll grab another piece of ribbon and decorate that. Kind of a funny tail there. Clean that up. Glue on both of our backs of our design chain. Lay our ribbon on one. Get another gleaming leaf. And tuck that right in there. This really adds a lot to the look of your ribbons, it decorates them really well. It also gives them the weight that you might want, especially with an armband so that they hang down and um, kind of give that swinging movement when they're walking. So we're gonna go ahead and let those dry. So we've got our design chain decorated. We've got two of our ribbons decorated. Now we're gonna concentrate more on the actual corsage. Um, we want to cover up the design disc. You can do this. Um, you can do this with fresh greenery. You can do it with the corsage, silk corsage leaves. Um, one way I really like to cover them up with is using pieces of the design discs. I'm sorry, pieces of the design chain. Because it really, a lot of times you'll snip one or two off and you don't want to throw them away. And they work really great just gluing them and attaching them to the design disc. Gives it a little bit more bling down there. Gives you a nice surface to glue into if you need to. Just a good way to cover them up. So I'm going to do a combination of both the design discs, the design chain, and the silk leaves to cover up the design disc. So, so the first thing we wanna do is pull all the ribbon up so we don't get that messy. And then take your glue and just do a really thin coat all along the design disc, both sides. If you watched me this morning, you know gluing is not my specialty. I get a little messy. So I probably put on a little bit more than I needed. You just kind of need a thin coat there, but it's not too bad. We're going to let it dry just a little bit, get a little tacky, and then we'll just start covering that up. You can leave it on the chain if you want to and just start folding them on. Let's see how it goes on really quick and easy. And maybe one more link for this little section. Cut one of those. Sometimes if your glue isn't sticking good, the way to really get it to stick good is to touch it and then take it off and then put it back on. And then it gets kind of tacky and stringy and it holds really well. So you can see my design disc is totally covered now. And I'm gonna add in just a couple of the leaves. Cut off the stems, we don't need those. Again, you want to breathe a little life into them, give them a little curl. You don't want to put them on there just flat. A little bit of glue. And I'm just going to tuck these in in a couple spots. There's a little more dimension to our design. And maybe one over here. Okay, 
So we've got our ribbons and our chain decorated. We've got our disc, disc covered. Now we need to add in the flowers. Now this to this point here should all be done before prom week even gets there. So you have this in your corsage box all ready to go. Um, Thursday, Friday before prom, you can start gluing in flowers. And we're going to use a Gerber daisy for this one. And you want to cut it really, really short, right up to the flower part. So we're going to do that. And then it, you can see it creates quite a big wound there. So we want to cover that up with glue. I'm going to make sure that we really cover that good because that's going to keep the flower from losing its moisture. And then add a little more glue going down so we get a really good bond in there in the ribbon. I'm going to go ahead and let that dry just a little bit. And while that's drying, we'll kind of separate this and figure out exactly where we want to lay that Gerber into. Make sure your ribbons are all going downward. For an armband, you don't want anything flying up. It should all be going down ribbon-wise anyhow. Okay, so we've got kind of a nice flat surface here. And we'll go ahead and lift this up, touch it, bring it off, and then put it back in. And that should hold. After a second here, I'll hold it for a little while. One thing I like to do with Gerbers and Daisies is to put a little um, piece of the design chain in the center. It makes it look really kind of fun and festive without adding hardly any money. But because this has a pretty black center and we've got the black feathers going on, I think I'm just going to leave that plain. So it kind of has the reputation of that color, the black color there. It's stuck on there pretty good. So you can see at this point, it's about done. Didn't take too long. We want to add in a little bit of line movement, though. So we're going to go ahead and add in um, a couple pieces of bear grass or lily grass actually we're using today. And just like this morning, you kind of want to manipulate those, warm them up with your hands so that you can bend them without them breaking because you want to get a nice, nice smooth line going here. Do you have patience? Yes. I'm going to interrupt you for a minute. Is there any sure. way to pull your camera up just a little bit so we can still see your design with everybody saying it's a... Um... They can't really see because your hands are too close. How's that? Thank Better? You so much. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. So what we're gonna do is take the lily grass and do kind of this cool swooping motion through over the design. So it's kind of almost sheltering the Gerber, but it gives it a little bit of protection too, because if someone bumps into this girl, they're gonna hit bounce off the lily grass before they hit the Gerber. So it's kind of a good way, especially if you're using a real delicate flower to do some caging over the top. And it's kind of a protective thing too. So we'll go ahead and do that. And you just want to give it a little bit of a fresh cut at the top. Okay. And then we're going to put a little glue on there. both sides because I'm going to tuck it in kind of between the ribbon and the Gerber. All right. So this is the top of the design. We're going to go ahead and tuck that in there. Kind of off to one side so that when we swoop it through, it's kind of at an angle. Working into the camera is kind of like working into the mirror. Everything's backwards. So I'm getting the hang of it here. And then we're just going to bend it where, so we want it about this, this full or this long. So what we're going to do is bend the grass where we're going to tuck it in at. So we're going to bend it here. So we have this nice insertion. And then we're going to go ahead and put glue on that. Patience, while you're working, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Sure. Is there a reason you use lily grass versus bear grass? Um, I just like that it's thicker and it usually ends up, a lot of times bear grass will have a lot of brown spots or, you know, it's just not as nice. Um, if I'm using like 
a lot of grasses, like a big bunch of it. I'll use bare grass, but for just one or two or three pieces of grass, I prefer the lily grass. Okay, also, how many days ahead of time do you add the flowers to corsages and boutonnieres? Okay, I um, we do a lot of handheld bouquets in my town. So we get our flowers in on Monday for prom. We do the handhelds Tuesday and Wednesday because those are going to be in water. And then Thursday and Friday, we um, we do the boutonnieres and corsages. So two days ahead of time is fine. Um, I would say the Gerbers are one of the flowers that I worry about. So I usually do make sure the Gerbers are all done on Friday. I don't usually start those till, till Friday. But spray roses, orchids, all that, they're going to hold up just fine. Um, as long as you're doing like a sealant finishing touch or crown and glory or something like that, that really makes a difference too. Do you spray any of them with a finishing spray? Yep, I do. I use, um, I think I use crown and glory. I've tried a lot of different ones. Um, I haven't been like, I haven't tested them. Like a lot of people will test and see which one's better, but I think they all work pretty good. Um, they definitely make a difference. I have tested that to see, you know, if you spray a couple things, some den, you know, some blossoms or especially delphinium, something delicate like that. If you spray them and just leave them out on your counter overnight and then leave a couple out that you haven't sprayed, you'll see that there is a, there's de definitely a difference and definitely worth taking your time to do that. So when you're all finished here, your armband should look something like this. You can see with this Gerber that I did last night, I did add the little bit of design chain in the center. And that's actually the Tracy design chain. It's a little bit smaller. It looks cute in there. Um, but like I said, maybe I should have used, left it out so that the black is repeated, but didn't think of it till later. And then I just tucked in the last bit of feathers right up deep in there where I had tucked in the lily grass. So you can see there's a lot of movement. There's a lot going on. It's just really fun, fun design for a girl. So I'll let you guys finish yours up. And if you have any more questions, go ahead and I'll grab my next project. Okay, patients, what do you do for the last minute girls that want a corsage like that? That would want a corsage like this? Uh-huh. I would make it for them. I would probably charge them a little extra. Um, we have a fee at our shop. It's called the irritation fee. So we get a lot of last minute girls. Um, the day before, I don't consider it last minute. Two hours before prom, I consider that last minute. So yeah, but I would I would still do that. I, I mean, I kind of go over and beyond for my customers. So you can see, I did a lot of talking, but you could get this done pretty easily in 10 minutes if you had to. So as long as you have all the product there, it's, it's not a problem to whip one of these guys up. Are there certain and, flowers that don't hold up in corsages? If so, could you name some? Um, I guess the only thing I've really had problems with is, um, sometimes the filler flowers, like, um, the Monty and the Solidago, that kind of thing where they're really delicate like that. Sometimes those I don't use too much because I have had a problem with those in the past. Um, I use mostly Gerber's, um, spray roses, a lot of orchids, and then a lot of like, I love the blooms off of lilacs. Um, I'm sorry, not lilacs. Oh, gosh, I'm having, I can't think. Um, you know, the purple stuff that smells really good this time of year. But I like to take the blooms off of a lot of the flowers and just use the bloom part of it, like not the whole flower. Use a lot of wax flower. Um, baronia, I've had a problem with baronia before, kind of wilting, so I stay away from that in corsage work. But... You know, there's the proven flowers, the roses, the Gerbers, the orchids, that kind of thing. The hyacinth, that's what I'm trying to think of. I love using hyacinth blossoms. Um, I love to use like the thistle and the green trick and that kind of stuff for like little accents. They hold up really, really well. Do you ever make up extra generic massages for just in case customers? Um, I do. I make up usually... Um, white and silver wrist corsage and boutonniere and just have it in the cooler because it'll sell. And if somebody wants, you know, some blue added in or, 
or pink or anything, you can tuck in a few blossoms really quick. I don't do too many of them though, because it's pretty easy to just pop together one really fast. So I usually have one extra in the cooler for each prom and I've, I don't know if I've ever not sold them. It's, they usually sell, but I don't do too many ahead of time. All right. I have no questions. You may proceed. All right. Thank you. Um, the next design we're going to work on is um, a wrist corsage. And we're going to do something similar to this. We're going to use some dendrobian orchids. And I found these about three years ago, and my prom girls love them. Um, they're called Blue Bomb. Um, blue Bombay, you can see like the Bombay orchids, kind of that fuchsia, and you can see that color in there. But then these are stem dyed, so you get that royal blue and turquoise and purple, and they just go really good with a lot of those dresses that are hard to match. So I use these a lot. Um, what you need for this project is your wristlet. This is the Tracy band, I believe. Tracy, I'm trying to memorize all these, but there's so many. Um, Taylor, I'm sorry. It's a really gorgeous band, kind of high end. You can see how beautiful it is. I would totally wear this after prom without the flowers. I think it's gorgeous. And then we're going to use um, the Dazzleline chain. The package of this which looks like this. And we're going to use um, a package of Kara's Kisses. One thing I find really interesting about Dan is... Um, that a lot of the product in his line is named after special people in his life, employees, his grandchildren, he adores his grandchildren and um, friends, that kind of thing. So I'm pretty sure like by next year, there'll be a patient something, but I'm, I'm just waiting to see what that's going to be. <laughs> so we've got Kara's Kisses and these are called Fun Time. These ones that I chose, I like those a lot. And then we've got a package of the spectacular spectacular leaf spray this is gorgeous i use this one a lot i like to kind of cut it apart because it's pretty big just as one chunk unless i'm doing a handheld sometimes just one kind of laying over the top kind of sheltering the design is really gorgeous so this is a really pretty piece too and what else do we need we need some filler we need silk six silks corsage leaves um, two yards of ribbon, Oasis glue, and I think that is it. Okay, so the first thing is we're going to do again, and I'm going to go ahead and tilt my camera down again. Try to let me know right away if it's at a bad angle. How's that look, Jamie? Okay, so... Okay, thank you. So I already tied the tight knot in that, like we talked about earlier. That's something really important you want to always do. And... Then we're gonna go ahead and tie in the bow. So I like to use kind of funky um, ribbon sometimes. And this is a little wide, I know, but you just use less um, loops and it's just kind of fun and different. And the girls like fun and different. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a little bow with this. And then using my second ribbon, just a really pretty um, glitter black ribbon. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. One thing I had talked, go ahead. Before you get too into this one, somebody also had a question on the last one that you made, and it was, if you wouldn't mind, what would be the price range for the Blue Bombay wrist corsage? I didn't quite catch that if I what? What would your price range be for the Blue Bombay wrist corsage? Um, my price range. Ooh. Okay, I'm not sure the price on the tailor. So, but I would two and a half times all of my hard goods. And then I would add in um, one stem of Bombay orchids, which is probably gonna run, let me think how much I paid for these this week. Maybe seven, 750. And then a stem of green trick, cause I have some green trick in there. So, it's hard to say without having like my prices for all these items in front of me, but going by the looks like, okay, the looks like 
um, way of pricing things. I mean, this is easily a $45, $55 brisk corsage. There's not a lot of flowers in it really, but the bling that's in there is expensive. It's on the more expensive end. Okay, so the Taylor is a $19.90. Okay, so it would even probably run more than the 55. But yeah, I I two and a half times my hard goods and then the flowers, you know, add in the cost of your flowers and then your labor, of course. Don't forget your labor. One thing we talked about this morning is that um, if you kind of have a sheet sitting on your bling bar, so what, and then the girls come in, um, they can just sit down and start filling out that sheet. That's really helpful too, because I know with, with what I've ran into is the girls, they it's safety in numbers. So they come in in groups of three or five or they maybe bring the guys with them to pick out tuxedos and you have 15 kids sitting around your bling bar. So obviously they kind of have to wait their turn. And so what I like to do is have the sheet. It's like a half sheet of paper and it's color coded. So all the Chamberlain ones are blue and all the Kimball ones are pink and vice versa. And they just fill it out while they're waiting for me. Um, their name and phone number, the, the um, boy's name and phone number, if they want wrist or handheld, um, the color of their dress, color of their jewelry, kind of flowers they may like. And that really helps. So when they leave, I have all that information um, I always make the girls show me their dresses. Either they bring them in or show me on their phone. And then I'll jot down little notes on that paper as well. You know, is it a funky dress? Is it classy? Does it have sequins? Um, maybe I'm thinking, oh, it's the perfect color for sweet, unique roses. So I'll write down that. So just little notes that I write on there as well to help me remember. So I'm going ahead and tie it in the ribbon or the bow. I'm just tying that in with these little white ribbon strands. Okay, and then we're going to take the chain and we're going to tie that in next. And it's a pretty long piece. So what I usually do is cut it in half, but I don't want it to be exactly in half because that's boring. So I'm going to cut it like one a little shorter than the other. Know that saying, use the right tool for the right job. I'm not good at that. I tend to grab whatever's handy. Okay, so then I'm gonna put them so that they're even, one's shorter, one's longer, both sides, kind of like that. And then we're just gonna tie those right in too. And all of this should be done, you know, before the week of prom, unless they're coming in that week, of course, you can't help it. But downtime, pull out a corsage box, start tying in the ribbon, tying in the bling, get it all ready, get the boutonniere ready as much as you can. So the week of prom, there's just a lot less work to do. Okay, so I've tied that in. So you can see where we're at there. And we're gonna go ahead and cover the design disc again, just like we did with the last one. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these strings. I think I'm done with them. So we're going to pull up all this ribbon and we're going to go ahead and put a light layer of glue on the design disc. And we'll let that dry a little bit. And then again, you can cover that with fresh greenery. You can cover that with um, the silk corsage leaves you can cover it with design chain. And again, I'm just gonna kind of do a combination of both. Just lay that right on top of the glue, flip it over and do the other side. And then maybe we'll tuck in a couple of corsage leaves because we have them. Got to admit, they're not my favorite product, but sometimes they're just perfect for what you need. Okay, 
one thing I learned about these guys is especially the iridescent and the silver ones. If you need a certain color and you don't have it, just grab some design master, shoot some color on there and then it works perfect. So go ahead and glue in a couple leaves if you want to into your design. Okay, so we've got the design disc covered and we've got the chain on. Now we're just going to straighten out our bow a little bit, flip it up a little bit. You can have both the tails going out in one direction if you want, or you can have them one going one way, one going the other. I think for this one, I'm going to have them both going in the same direction. But it's your corsage, your baby. You get to do it however you want. Okay, so we've got that kind of look going on. And then we're going to take this gorgeous leaf and we're going to go ahead and cut it into three sections. So we're going to cut it here, here, and here. Okay, we're going to leave a little nub on each one so we have that to help um, poke into our design and keep it stable. All right. And now we're going to go ahead and decorate the ribbon tails. Um, I think on one of these, I'm going to go ahead and use the spectacular leaf spray. And I'm just going to glue that in. I'm going to glue that on there, but then I want to make sure that it's going to stay. And because I'm going to be using glue and I don't want it to look messy, I have to cover it up with something. We could cover it up with design chain. Um, but we've got these great Kara's Kisses, so I think what I'll do is use one of those. So I'm going to cut the end off of that. Just leave a tiny little nub there. Go ahead and apply your glue here. patients while you're working. Mm -hmm. Have you ever scaled down a corsage to accommodate a girl with a smaller budget? Oh, absolutely. I am great at working on a budget. So I've got all price points, um, just like we don't want to undersell our girls or assume that they want something inexpensive. We also can't assume that they can afford, you know, everything. There's great ways to make cute corsages um, without using high-end flowers. Um, Dan has some great bling um, wristlets in his line. I know the one that we, we're working on now, this is an expensive wristlet, no doubt about it. But he's got some great ones that are not that expensive, but they look, they have the appearance of being expensive. So I like to offer those a lot. Um, yeah, you definitely have to have options for girls on a budget as well as the girls that want to spend a lot. And it's just like anything, working with a bride on a budget. Um, we're all professionals. We've all done this long enough. And we've got great ideas, great ways to, to save money for them, but also to make it look wonderful. So you bet. Okay, so that's how that's going to look. But I'm going to let it dry for a little bit. Okay. And then we're oh. going to save the other two pieces to tuck in around the dendros once we get those in there. All right. Do you ever spray your white orchids to get the color you want instead of purchasing so many different colors? Um, that's a great question. I know that it can be done, and I know that a lot of people do that very well. Um, Design Master has some fabulous paint out there, and I do a lot of spray paint for um, some of the ethnic groups that live in my area. I'm not a fan of spraying flowers unless it's asked for. Uh, I think there's so many great options out there that I don't really have a problem with buying a whole bunch because um, I guess it's kind of how you sell your flowers. So I'm not going to 
let my girls get super specific. Most of them trust me. Most of them really don't care. They just want it to be amazing. So of course they might say blue flowers or pink flowers. And I always let them know it's going to be high end flowers. It's going to be roses and it's going to be orchids and it's going to be that kind of thing. But, um, you know, maybe if they want all pink flowers, I'll definitely bring in a bunch of pink orchids, but then, you know, I'm going to have 10 or 15 or 20 other um, risk dressages that need pink. Uh, I'm not opposed to doing that, but it's not anything that I've really ever had to do. I know if you maybe have a really small prom where maybe you only have five or 10 or 20 couples, it might be something that you want to look at doing. Um, I also don't really have a problem with doing 75% fresh. And if I need a little bit of blue something and I, you know, that's one of those colors that's kind of hard to come by sometimes, I'll take a little bit of you know, quality silk and tuck that in there. And when it's mostly fresh, you just don't really notice the fact that there's silk in there. Does that help? A little bit. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and cut some florets off. I like these little unopened buds. I think they add kind of a whole new texture and kind of feel to it. So I'll, I'll usually use those too. another thing I like to do is kind of to stack my orchids so kind of one on top of the other um, so if you get one in like this one here that has a little bit of a damaged leaf I would still use that I would pull the damaged leaf off and this would be the one that I would stack on the bottom because I like the depth of um, layering them sometimes um, especially with the dendrobium they can be kind of flat if you just put them all at one level. So I do like to kind of stack those sometimes. A little bit of glue on the end of the stem to seal in that wound. And then a little bit more glue on the base so that we have a really good gluing surface there. And then I just kind of start tucking them in here. One thing like the, if you're careful about what flowers you buy, you can buy a lot less. Um, something like these Bombay orchids where you can use them in purple dresses, you can use them in teal dresses, you can use them in the royal blue dresses. So, you know, something like that really helps. I use a lot of citrus green in my bouquets because it seems like no matter what color scheme you're going with, unless it's really, really pastel. That pop of citrus green really adds a lot of depth and dimension to it. It's getting pretty full here, but I think we could add one more in. I was wondering if anyone else out there has thumbnails that are stained from always pinching off blossoms. It's a bad habit, but I can't seem to break it. A bit of glue. So you can see if all this ribbon and bling and everything was done ahead of time, gluing in four or five florets and a little bit of trick or greenery would go really, really fast. Okay, so we've got that in there. I'm gonna go ahead and glue in a couple of my buds just because I think they're cool. They add another look, they add another texture. And we don't wanna just throw them away. And they've got a lot of that teal look to them too. So if you're doing this for a teal dress, that would definitely wanna use some of the buds. I kind of just like to group those together there. A little bit more of a statement. You notice them a little bit more when they're grouped. Okay. So then we're going to go ahead and glue in our last two um, pieces of the leaf spray. And again, some glue on the little end there. So we're going to glue it in, but we're also going to kind of poke it in, poke it in through the ribbon. If I was using um, spray roses or something with a little bit stronger base, I would poke into them a little bit. 
See that one there. Prom is just like Valentine's Day and Mother's Day and Christmas. It's all about preparation. The more you can be prepared, the easier it's going to go. Nobody likes to work till midnight. So, you know, more of this you can do up ahead of time on your downtime, the better. Um, got a couple of Kara's kisses left. So we're going to cut those. We're going to cut the stem off of that about half, a little more than half of it off. Add a little glue and poke those right down into the orchids. Okay, and then because I like green trick, I'm gonna put a little bit of that in around just to cover up maybe some of my glue areas. Um, even if you don't really have any glue areas showing, you know, like I said, that bright citrus green just kind of makes everything else pop. So we're just gonna add in just a couple little tufts of this. I'm gonna pull apart your ribbon. Just kind of tuck it in where it looks like there's a little opening. Okay, so I'll show you the finished one. And I'll give you guys a little bit of time to finish up. So this is how it should look when you're all finished. Um, we've got the ribbon kind of accessorized with the bling there. We've got the beautiful design chain. We've got a lot of depth with our orchids because we kind of stacked them on top of each other. We've got some green trick going on in there for another texture. A little bit of the ribbon showing. And just kind of a fun, different look for one of those hard to match dresses. One thing we talked about this morning that I'll let, give you guys a little bit of time to finish up um, and I can show you again, sorry if you already saw this, but um, another thing that's important when you're designing for prom is to do multiples. Don't do one, one wrist corsage at a time. If you've got your blue Bombay orchids out, grab all your wrist corsages that need blue Bombay and do them all at once or do four or five at a time. This is just a piece of styrofoam and it just fits all the armbands and the wristlets and everything really nice. So you got your blue flowers out, everything should be ready to go. Should be at this point with your wrist corsages. All you have to do is glue in your flowers, get four of them done, probably get all four of these guys done. If the phone isn't ringing and you're not being interrupted in like 10 minutes, 15 minutes max. So it's a lot faster to just do them, you know, more than one at a time. Then if you've got five more blue ones, go ahead and do those and then move on to all your pink ones or all your yellow ones or your mixed pastels or so forth. So I, I want to keep them even organized in my box. All my blue ones are over here. I've got those all done. I can work on those first. So it's all about organization. Okay. I think that was it for what we were going to do together. So I'll just go over some of the ones that I made last night. And I think actually the first one I'll show you is um, one that I did kind of with less expensive flowers because we had that question about, you know, girls that are on a budget. So this little cutie here is made with daisies. And we all know daisies are pretty inexpensive. Um, it's on the Block Party Dazzle wristlet. So again, not super high-end wristlet, but it's got a lot of bling to it. It's very pretty. Comes in a lot of colors. Um, I like the kind of iridescent or the dazzle one because it goes with most of the dresses. And then we've just got some ribbon, a couple different kinds of ribbon. I think I've got actually three kinds of ribbon here. Um, the little polka dot and the two glittery ones. Um, some design chain. This is the Tracy design chain, and this is my 
probably my favorite design chain. It's so versatile. You can use it in so many ways. And all I really did to make these daisies um, a little bit special is I just glued the design, one link of the design chain into each daisy. Kind of covered up that yellow, which we really didn't want that color combination in, in with this white and pink. And it makes those daisies look really special. From a distance, you'd be like, I hmm, wonder what flower that is. It's kind of fun. It's kind of different. And it's just a plain old boring daisy, but we made it fun with the fits accessories. <laughs> Then I've got some of these marquee accent sprays that I tucked in there. And probably a stem and a half of spray roses. <clears throat> One stem of daisies, probably not even a whole stem. So you can see there's not a lot of product in here, but it's cute. And definitely for a girl on a budget, she would love this. Um, the design chain hanging down. So I tied that in after the ribbon, just like I did earlier. And then I like to accessorize my ribbon sometime with the design chain. And my daughter, Maggie, loves to do this. So if you got a little one in the store, it's very easy for them to do. Just glue it on front and back so that you're hiding the glue. And it gives it that really cute, sparkly, high-end ribbon look and super, super inexpensive. So that's kind of a fun, inexpensive one. Very simple. Um, let's see. We're going with pink, so let's just do another pink one here. Okay, this is um, one of the least expensive wristlets you'll find in his line, and I really like it. It's the classic and ice. It feels really comfortable on. It's nice and wide, and just has a really nice feel on. Um, these, this is another piece that's good for girls on a budget. It's really relatively inexpensive. And then we've just got some inexpensive design chain. We've got. Um, two different kinds of ribbon, it looks like. We've got the flutters in white. I love these little guys. They come with those little rhinestones attached. The flying high um, feathers are just feathers, and the flutters have the rhinestones. So we've got the design chain, the Tracy design chain, um, part of a spe spectacular spray. We've got two chunks of it down there at the end of the ribbon and then I tucked one in here. Now, if you had a girl on a budget and she was buying the boutonniere too, I would probably save one of these little chunks for the boutonniere. That would be a gorgeous boutonniere back. It wouldn't take much, maybe one ranunculus and you'd be done there. Um, I love ranunculus, love using them in corsage work. Even if they get a little bit, you know, sad and wimpy, they still look gorgeous. I mean, there's really nothing wrong with those. These have been sitting out since last night. Got just a couple little spray roses tucked in there. And one thing I like to do with the design chain, especially, um, especially the bigger stuff, like the Tracy, I mean, I'm sorry, the Wanda, the bigger pieces, is to tuck it in with my ribbon. See how that kind of gives you more dimension and depth in there? It keeps your ribbon from kind of being flat. So I like to tuck those little pieces in sometimes. Super inexpensive way to just add a little bling without adding much money. You know, a penny. Probably you got a penny right there, but look how cool it looks. Wax flower, squeezy flower. My baby girl calls them squeezy flower. So whenever I look at those, I think of her. So I use those a lot. You squeeze them and they smell yummy. I think that's about all that's in there, but it's a cute little wristlet. You could have all this done up ahead of time and just popping in four flower heads and some filler would take, you know, a minute or two and you'd be done. So it's a nice one. Patience, I have a question for you. Sure. I'm pretty sure it was the last corsage you made. A lady wants to know, I'm going to get this wrong because I can't even say it, but she wants to know how you cut the green dantheist in the last corsage. If you have any tips about cutting it. Okay, the dianthus. Um, dianthus is a fancy way of saying uh, carnation. So if you have um, brides that are a little bit flower snobby, but you want to use carnations in some of their centerpieces or whatever, you can say you'll use beautiful dianthus and they will not know that it's carnation. But this green trick dianthus is actually, a, it's in the family of carnation. You can tell by the stem and 
you can see it has like a lot of florets down there. So when I'm using it as filler or as greenery for corsage work, I just cut off like, I have something hanging on my scissors. I just cut off like one chunk, okay? So this one chunk, you can then pull apart and you can see how many little tufts you can get out of that one little chunk off of the one head. So this stuff goes a long ways and it holds up super, super good. Is that kind of what she was asking? Hopefully we answered her question. I believe we did. Okay, good. All right, go ahead. Um, speaking of green trick dianthus, here's a fun corsage I did last night. Um, Basically, I just started I started it on the bubble bath wrist corsage, another one that's not real high end, but looks like it could be. It's very pretty. It comes in lots of colors. This one's a nice purple color. Um, I started with this, and then I just added in the ribbon, which let me show you. Not all of us have been in the industry for a million years like I have, and bows I remember when I first started bows were so hard to make and so you know if you're not really good at bows yet it's okay you can just take um what's that four inches three to five inches length of ribbon six inches and just cut them all a little bit different sizes and then you just tie them in the middle with another coordinating coordinating piece of ribbon and you can use that as a bow there's nothing wrong with that. It's a little bit flat. So you just have to be aware of that when you're building your corsage on top of it to make sure that you're gluing in between the layers of ribbon so that it's not flat. But I use those sometimes just because they're fun, not because I don't know how to make a bow, but so it's something that we can all use. If you get tired of seeing the same old bow, try this trick. It's kind of fun. So I did one of those bows and just laid that on top, tied it in. And then I glued in some um, purple corsage leaves that I had. And then I just took one um, whole stem of green trick and I glued it on here and then just kind of flattened it. So this whole piece of green trick was the basis of my whole corsage. It's like, it's almost like an armature. Everything that came after the green trick is glued into it. So it was very fast, very fun. A lot of texture going on here, a lot of depth. So I grouped in some um, orchid blossoms. I grouped in some hyacinth, which are smelling amazing right now. Between the hyacinth and genestra, I'm in heaven. Um, a couple of the moon shadow carnations or dianthus, if we don't want to let the girls know we're using carnations. Um, some of the thistle, another great little product that holds up super good and sometimes you need that purpley blue color it's kind of a hard color to find and then I just used um some of the Kara's Kisses again to kind of give it a little bit of bling on top and I like to cluster them so instead of equally polka dotted apart maybe one and then two so kind of group those together and I thought they repeated the Tracy design chain kind of glitz look so this corsage was super quick, super quick, easy to put together. It's got some good colors in it for some of those hard to match dresses. And it was a fun one. It was fast. Fun corsages are always, fast corsages are always fun, I should say. This was one of my favorites I did last night. Um, I started with the cobblestone wristlet. I'm thinking that's kind of a more higher end wristlet. It's gorgeous. It feels beautiful. And I use the Kara's Kisses and the New Brilliance on top. I like how the cobblestone and the Kara's Kisses both being kind of square went together so nicely. Um, again, two kinds of ribbon. I use this kind of cool netting ribbon and then just a regular kind of lime green ribbon. And then the wool. I don't know if you guys use the wool or not, but it's kind of a fun little texture to, to add in there. And it was just like a little loop on this side and a little loop on that side. Um, I would tell you that usually I use mini cymbidiums, not usually the big cymbidiums, but um, I wasn't thinking ahead and I didn't pre-book them. So this is what my wholesaler has and I love him dearly. And so I was happy because they're gorgeous, but maybe a little bigger than I normally would use. So a couple of the cymbidiums, 
um, orchids and then a couple of the ranunculus. And the, I kind of added those in as an afterthought, but I thought they pulled the deep kind of pinky burgundy of the throat of the orchids really nicely. So I added those in and a little bit of bling. And it was, again, a really fast, quick corsage, um, five flowers and a couple jewels on top. Everything else was already done. So um, I added the feathers at the bottom. And again, kind of what I showed you earlier, where you just take the design chain and fold it over on top of itself and then put the feathers out at the bottom. So it's really cute when the girls are walking, that pretty movement they get. And you kind of want to stagger them. You don't want them all at the same height. That would be kind of boring, but kind of staggered. So pretty simple corsage. Again, um, more impressive flowers, more important flowers, but fewer of them. You're going to be able to sell it for more, and it's going to take you a lot less labor than putting seven or 11 little spray roses in there. Okay. Any questions on that one? Okay. I've got two left here. Um, the Zoe arm cuff. Now, I thought this one was fun. Um, it looks kind of tribal to me, an arm cuff. Also, this works really good for the bigger girls. Like, this is the perfect size bracelet for me. Uh, I know it's an arm cuff, but no, that would not fit on my arm, upper arm, but it fits great as a bracelet. So that's a good option um, to show to your bigger girls too. Um, this ribbon was really fun. You know, a lot of times they have those kind of animal print dresses and it's kind of hard to figure what color to go with. And, and so we're just pulling the, um, the orange out of this animal print. And this is kind of a fun leucodendron I used this morning that I got from my wholesaler. I think he called it cloudy day or cloudy something, but isn't it fun? So it's in, the same family as like the safari sunset and that but just a different look it's really cool and then um so the ribbon i really actually only used one ribbon this time which i said i usually like to use two so but another fun little technique with the tails of your ribbon if you fishtail your ribbon let me point my camera down so you can see if you fishtail your ribbon but then fold one fishtail over on top of the other fishtail and glue it you get this look which is nice and clean but then you also get this like little cup right there that you can glue um, wax flower looks good in there any kind of little berry hypericum the seeded uke berries look good in there and then i just tucked in a little piece of the tracy design chain to give it a little bit more importance down there um we've got some of the beautiful design um chain in there or the dazzle chain i'm sorry and i wanted to highlight that a little bit so on the ends again i used the tracy chain and cut apart the feathers so the flutters i cut one apart and then i got like three or four pieces so i was able to do three or four of these with one of the flutters. And then I tucked the rest of the flutters in amongst the leucodendron on top, just so that it kind of followed through the design. It wasn't just in one area. You kind of want to bring your accents through so that they're in more than one area. Um, I pulled the blossoms or the middle of the leucodendron out and just kind of made a fun line going through the design. And then again, to just give it a little bit more importance, I added a couple links of the Tracy chain just to give it a little bling in there without getting too crazy. So then I added in a few pieces of the naked seated uke just to kind of cover up a little bit of my mechanics, but kind of a fun little way to use kind of a tribal looking band. Right. And my last one here. So a lot of our girls, um, you know, and I'm sure you're the same way. Your girls want something different. They want something that no one's had before, no one's seen before. And so a few years ago, um, we started doing garters in, with fresh flowers. And um, this little guy, this Athena, is it Athena? Pretty sure, yes. The Athena armband works perfectly for a garter because it's adjustable. So depending on what size you know, that their leg is, if they want to wear it above the knee, below the knee, and it can just fit real secure on there. 
So it's, this is a fun little look for a garter. Um, started with my ribbon again. I left the tails pretty long, as you can see. And um, then I just glued in a few dendros, um, some of the um, little glittery sprays, um, some bear grass again, I'm sorry, lily grass. And I accented the lily grass with a couple of the Tracy Design Chain um, links just to give it a little bit more importance and also to give it a little bit of weight so that it fell straight down. We didn't want it pointing straight out off the girl's knee. And then again, with the, the flutters and the royal blue, I kind of pulled some of the royal blue out of the dendro orchid and just added a little bit of the flutters at the bottom here. You can see I used the teal ribbon and the royal blue ribbon, and it looks great with this Bombay orchid purple, any of those colors you can pull out of there. So it's kind of a fun little um, garter that they could wear. I've also used these, as I said before, for like pull it apart a little farther. And all of a sudden it's a really cool like headband. So you can use it that way. Um, necklace, you can use it as a necklace. This is a neat piece. You can, there's a lot of uses for it. So I'd recommend to pick up a couple of those and play around and show the girls some ideas on that. So I think that's all I had to show you. I hope you enjoyed it today. I hope you learned a few things. And like I said, if you have any questions, you're welcome to email me, patience.pickner at hotmail.com. You can email um, Jamie and Dan at FITS. They would be glad to answer any questions as well. And remember, there's um, webinars every Tuesday, different, different um, categories every week. And they're always free. So sign up for them. Tell your friends about them. And we'll just keep designing and, and creating. So thank you very much and have a great day.